Hello, my name is Paul, welcome to Kit Guru, and today I'll be looking at the Shuttle Barebone System SZ2700R8. Yeah, that name rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Yeah, so this is a Z270 platform, so basically Intel's last top of the range platform. I mean, they just released their Z370 platform, so if you want anything bigger than a quad core, you're not going to be able to put it in this system, but oh well. Um, this is a bare bone system, so it comes with a motherboard, PSU, um, a CPU cooler, and it also comes with, obviously, the case. So, working from the outside in, the case is quite minimalistic, and what I mean by that is, is it's all black, the panel is pretty plain, so you've got really nothing much on the front panel except the two LED lights that turn on when the system is on. Um, one for the hard drive and one for the power. power. Along the front also, to keep everything hidden, they've included like a door which you just click, opens and then it reveals the two USB 3 ports and the audio jacks as well. The case seems to be made out of brushed aluminium, which is quite nice. It feels quite sturdy. The only bit of plastic I could find was along the sides of the front panel. That is the only bit of plastic on the exterior of the case. Um, the rest is a brushed aluminium, which is very nice. Along both sides of the system, you've got two, air, two long air vents going across all the side panels, so that's pretty good. I'm not really worried about ventilation in this case, but we'll test that out when we get to the temperatures. So to remove the panel, all you do is remove the three thumb screws and the panel pops off nice and simple. Okay, so one quick note about the panel itself is that the dust filter that covers both the vents are glued down, so you won't be able to remove them. Right, so once the front panel is off, you can see that the to get a good look at the hardware, we're gonna need to get rid of the hard drive cage. So, I mean, you can see it anyway, but getting rid of the hardware cage makes things easier especially for installation so to remove this is just four screws that hold it down and off it pops uh, this cage can support up to four 3.5 inch hard drives or alternatively three 3.5 inch hard drives and a solid state or 2.5 inch drive right at the bottom so this does natively support 2.5 inch hard drives once that's removed, you can see the front cooling fan. Um, I think they could have fit a bigger fan in here because I reckon this thing's gonna be noisy. It actually pulls in air from the bottom of the, f well, from a groove cut out in the front of the panel. So this is well hidden and I like that. So it's kind of a discreet way of not adding a big vent on the front of the case. So once the hard drive cage is removed, we can get a good look at the motherboard. Okay, so the motherboard, like I said before, is based on the Z270 platform, so it's up to date with the latest features. So you've got DDR4 up to 64 gigabyte, dual 10 bit gigabit LAN, four SATA connections, and it also got support for a couple of M.2 configurations. So you can either have a 2230 with an A or E key, plus a M.2 with a 2280 type M key, or alternatively, you can have two times 2280 with M keys. They decided to add two PCIe slots. So one is 16 times and the other is four times. Now the motherboard isn't your standard form factor. So imagine an ITX motherboard, but longer. So this is good for, at least you can utilize the whole length of the case. So it kind of makes cable management easier because everything's more spaced out. Um, the downside is, is it's just a bit weird, isn't it? I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't make the motherboard a bit smaller. I mean, that means you can make the whole case smaller, but then obviously you lose support for the GPU. Okay, so if we turn the shuttle around, you can see the included power supply that comes with the, with the shuttle. So it's rated for about 500 watts and it is silver rated, so that's quite good. Um, gold would have been better, but there you go. It comes with a couple of decent amount of connections. So it comes with four SATA connections, two Molexes, and two GPU connections as well. Now the GPU connections, you've got one eight pin and one six pin, which covers a broad range of GPUs. As long as your system doesn't go over 500 watts, you should be fine. 
Right, so as you've probably noticed by now, the form factor of the power supply isn't your standard form factor. So it's gone for like a shuttle style form factor, which is kind of longer. Um, they've kind of integrated it onto the side, which is good because it keeps it out of the way. The downside is obviously if you want to use another power supply or a different type of form factor, you're not going to be able to. Um, and also it has got a very small fan so this thing will probably get very noisy under load but I'll test that out when I do the temperature checks. Um, the cables are also ketchup and mustard. Now I don't mind that because you're not really going to see the fact that they're not sleeved and they're you know not braided at all and also it kind of makes it easier to plug them in so normally when you get sleeve cables in an ITX case it's like you're trying to wrestle a cobra but this should be this is this was relatively easy also because the power supply is designed for a system like this they're all the right length so you don't have that excess cable clutter which is good okay so now there's one more thing that comes in this system which I have not mentioned yet and that is the CPU cooler or the integrated cooler engine, as they um, like to call it, or ICE-2 for short. Now, like everything else the, in this shuttle, the CPU cooler seems designed to perfectly fit into the shuttle. So basically you've got four heat pipes that are the right length to reach the back where the heat sink is, and then you use a separate shroud and fan to slot on and then secure it with four thumb screws at the back. Connecting the CPU is quite simple because it's got the four Intel push pins that you just push down. Pretty much easy installation, no removing the motherboard required. Okay, so on the actual CPU cooler itself, you've got a big stick sticker saying basically the limit of the cooler is about 95 watts. Now that's fine because the highest KB Lake processor, it kind of peaks at 95 watts. But if you're gonna stick a 7700K in here and overclock it, you might wanna be careful a bit. Um, but Going on that, we might as well move into the temperatures. I mounted a GPU in here just because I wanted to test out the total capability of the case and seeing as the PSU is up to the task, I thought, why not? I stuck an R9285 in here, which fit perfectly. Um, and as you can see, we've got a lot of length left. So you can pretty much fit a long graphics card in here if you want to, as long as you don't obviously go over the power draw. Okay, so it's time for the temperature testing. So I use the following system. I used a combination of IDA64 and Unigen Heaven running simultaneously for about 10 minutes. And the temperatures I got were quite decent actually. So the hottest I saw on the hottest core the CPU go to was around 58 degrees. And the hottest I saw the GPU go to was about 75 degrees. Okay, now it's time for the conclusion of this shuttle. It's a bit of a weird one because I'm not obviously reviewing just the case. I'm reviewing the motherboard and the cooler that comes with it. The whole thing as a package. Now, this currently retails for about £350, which is not bad. The problem is, is you need to spend quite a bit more money to get the CPU cooler, the RAM, the hard drive to actually get the thing up and running. Obviously, the GPU is optional. So then you're talking quite a bit more and I mean, it comes with all the latest features. So you've got, you know, the Z270 platform. Um, it does support Optane memory, by the way. I forgot to mention that earlier. The problem is Intel Z370 just came out. So you can't put the latest processor in there. Everything else is up to date except for the processor socket. So that is a bit annoying. And the, I mean, the build quality is good with the aluminium with brushed finish and it, the case is quite light which is also a plus but solid the cooler in there did an okay taming my i5 processor but you have to realize that that hottest was about 58 degrees and that was with only an i5 and not even one of the highest end ones so if you're putting planning on putting a 7700k in here I don't think the cooler would fare as well, especially when overclocking. I mean, I wouldn't even go near an overclocking. Now, I like the look, the overall look of the minimalistic look, very nice, especially the door at the front, which hides the front connections. But the, the main problem I have with this case is if you were gonna use a certain 
a different size components like motherboard and power supply. You could have taken the opportunity to move away from the shoe box design. I mean, so you've got the Fractal 202 where the GPU is mounted horizontally. And I think they really could have taken an opportunity to build it that way. Because if you're gonna use certain custom size components and a CPU cooler designed to fit in here, you could have been a bit more inventive with designing it that way. I mean, it's kind of a portable case in the sense that it's more portable than a tower, but the cube form factor isn't as portable as something that's more thin and long. Also, if you were gonna use a shoebox design, you could have made it a bit smaller. I mean, there are cases out there. I mean, I own the SG13, and that is actually smaller than this. Now, obviously, you don't have room for as many um, hard drives, and the graphics card, you can't fit as long of one in there, but it is generally smaller, making it more portable. So, yeah, that's another weird choice that they actually went for with this. So, I can't really figure out who this is for, which is my main concern. So it's for obviously if somebody wants a small system, relatively small, um, someone who wants it to be quite sleek, okay, reasonably sleek, but it, it seems to be, I don't understand if you were going to go and buy a system like this and then end up putting all, spending more money on the components put in it anyway, why wouldn't you just build it from the ground up? I mean... Is it for someone who is comfortable installing a CPU, RAM, graphics card, hard drive, but not comfortable touching the motherboard? I mean, that seems like a weird market to want to target. I mean, maybe it's for people who want the system and want to get it up running as quick as possible because building in the system was very easy. I mean, all the cables, they I, I knew exactly what cables went where. Um, everything is nicely in place to perfectly go in. I didn't barely have to do any cable management. Um, and I got this, the building in the system was very easy. So getting it up and running was nice and quick. The case didn't get as noisy as I thought it would. So the main issue is though, the power supply does make a high pitch noise. So it's not actually that loud. It's just very noticeable. So that is one concern you might have. Also, the small fans at the front and the back do make a bit of noise, especially the CPU cooler once it gets under load. But if you're having this as a home mirror PC or gaming PC, you'll probably have headsets on and noise coming out of your TV. So you probably won't hear it that much. But if you're sitting next to it, it will definitely be noticeable. GPU support is great. You've got a lot of room in there for a decent sized GPU. Okay, please subscribe to Kit Guru. I'm Paul, and yes, I've cut my hair. It was getting in the way. And yeah, have a good day. See ya.